Sharon represents um, the new developments that have been happening in, in CFAP um, as uh, people working in creative media other than the visual arts begin to get involved um, uh, and apply to the program. Sharon is a, a children's uh, and young people's writer um, with a very long and very successful career in writing for young people. She's been nominated for the Governor General's Award twice and um, has written a number of books um, involving uh, children and um, aspects of, of war and um, military service. I'm a young adult author. Um, I'm the first children's writer to be included in the program. And I'm, I'm, I'm ridiculously proud of that. Um, I applied for the program. I had the form in my hand, and I put it in that red box, the mailbox. And as it slipped out of my hand, I thought, I've got this. I've nailed it. And I had no reason to think that. Um, it never happened before. Um, but maybe it came, it started when I was 12. Um, every summer, uh, I went over to Belfast with my grandmother. We went by ship. My grandmother was an indentured servant to Canada, and we sailed third class. We ate in the se second class restaurants, and my grandmother would steal the buns. She couldn't stand leaving them. Now, our cabin, we, two people couldn't stand in our cabin. One had to sit and we had to switch places. That's how small it was. And I was just a little 12-year-old. Um, so you can imagine what would happen when it started to fill up with buns. There was buns in the uh, cabinet. There was buns below the bed, tucked into baskets. Um, so I didn't want her to be embarrassed. Uh, because I knew that cleaners would come in. She, she couldn't get her head around that. Um, so I would tuck them up under my shirt, and every morning at the crack of dawn, I would go and throw them overboard. But the only place to throw them overboard was in first class. And if you've ever been on the QE2, you know that in second class down below, you can't get right to the edge, right? Or else you'll be pitching the things. So there I would go before dawn, and I would throw out all these things. And there was a man standing there every morning, elegant, Burberry raincoat, looking out. His name was Mr. Silver, and he had been in World War I. He never asked me why I was feeding the fishes, um, but he would tell me stories. Those stories formed the basis of uh, my first book about War Charlie Wilcox, which is mandatory reading for most Canadian kids. Uh, that's so evil of me. Um, and he told me about war artists. He told me about all of them. He met uh, several of the, of the group of seven. He would go on and on, and I loved it. So years later, when I saw that they might accept a children's writer, just might, to me it was full circle. So it made perfect sense. Now, I, I trust this feeling of, you know, when I put something in the mailbox. Recently, I put a, another grant application, and as it slipped through my hand, I thought, no way in hell. And I was right about that, too. Um, so I will start by saying I went to Afghanistan. I went with um, another artist called Althea Thalberger. I've got a photograph of her, because I, I hate the idea that she's not here. That's OK. She's in Prague. She's fine. Um, but I wanted you to see a photograph of her. I actually have one of her, her works, too. Um, and I also wanted to start with another artist called Raphael uh, Gerzak. His photographs are in this book, Thunder Over Kandahar. Um, let's roll. Yes. So this is, um, OK, well, we're at the FOB. Keep going fast. FOB, Forward Operation Base. Um, this is a nurse. These are two nurses. Um, I, you could always tell nurses um, because the ones I met all smoked. I don't know about yours, but they all smoked. So here's the forward operation base. That's the background. Um, Althea and I, had, we started off in Camp Mirage uh, where we attended a ramp ceremony um, and shopped. 
Um, we then flew to CAF, Kandahar Airfields. We were there about two hours. Uh, we hadn't slept in four nights, and someone said, you're in a, a Griffin helicopter in two hours, get ready. Um, Al was always ready. It was really quite irritating. Uh, and we ended up, um, two helicopters, flying over the desert, uh, testing their weapons. I could hear Al screaming from the other helicopter. Uh, we landed in the forward operation base. Young men like this, they're not local Afghan children. They're brought in from other cities. That's Al. I took that photo. Althea Thalberger. Here we're preparing to go out in foot patrol. We're out on foot patrol. If you are children, and you're not, I would ask you, notice the difference, the distance between soldiers. Of course, that's for um, IEDs. That dog's called Miracle. Children would ask a lot about dogs. Uh, that dog was trained by the Canadian uh, um, locals. Canada doesn't have any do uh, bomb-sniffing dogs. Uh, what they do is train dogs when they're over there, and that's just soldiers who are bored. And they do quite well. He's called Miracle because he survived three explosions. Uh, local children, this is a Taliban village. Um, the, the, uh, the men and women are all tucked away. They send out the kids, though. Child? Um, there's the signs of the old Russian equipment that populate the place. Keep going. ANA, Afghan National Army. Me. Now you'll see one adult that he would follow us everywhere. He has a cell phone. He's reporting back. Again, the spacing. Uh, and that's us just looking out. That's the fob in the, in the background. So there's the village. And those roads are made by Canadians. Only source of water for the village. It's filthy. Oh, don't we look lovely. That's on our way back in a Hercules. This guy's tied in, and I'm not. Um, I always tried to sit right at the edge um, because I don't know about you, Bill, but um, they always vomited on my feet. Uh, nobody sort of passes out gravel at any point. Inside, a Herc. Uh, terrible picture, but the kids love it because it's a gunner. 